right now, Chenier Energy has one of the highest dividend yields in the entire stock market with a 9.3% dividend yield. But is it sustainable? We're analyzing Chenier Energy stock ticker CQP to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Chenier Energy. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Chenier Energy for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Chenier Energy stock performance. Currently, Chenier Energy trades for $48.85 per share. In the last year, their stock price is down 9%. In the last five years, Chenier Energy is compounding their stock price at just over 7% annually. During the last 10 years, they're compounding their stock price at 5% annually. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, in the 16 years since Chenier Energy has been publicly listed, the company's compounded their stock price by about 5% annually. Chenier Energy pays out a 9.3% dividend yield currently. Their average dividend yield throughout this 16-year time frame is in addition to these compounded annual returns. Chenier Energy trades just under $6 above their 52-week low. The company is down $16 from their 52-week high. Very few of their shares are sold short. Chenier Energy has a $22 billion market cap. They're a big company. But what else do we need to know about the business? Chenier Energy Partners is the direct owner of the Sabine Pass liquid natural gas terminals as well as regasification facilities. It also owns the Creel Trail Pipeline, which connects the terminal to third-party gas suppliers. Chenier Partners shares in the marketing fees generated by Chenier Marketing from Sabine Pass marketed gas volumes. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. There are two key reasons for this. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. These business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this allows us to build in margin of safety. Chenier Energy has increased their returns on capital by quite a bit during this time. Things were pretty steady from 2018 to 2020. Since then, their returns have increased by quite a bit. Averaged out in the last five years, Chenier Energy earns about 14.5% returns on capital in a given year. That's coming in half a percentage point above the benchmark we'd be looking for, meaning this is a check to start things off for metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking at the company's growth. We want to see growth in their revenues and their free cash flows in the last five years. During this time, Chenier Energy has increased their revenues by two and a half times and their free cash flows have quadrupled. Huge growth, especially recently for the company. This is another check on metric number two. In metric number three, we're looking at the company's shares outstanding. We want to see these decreasing. Chenier Energy has kept their shares outstanding exactly flat in the last five years. While this technically isn't the decrease we'd be looking for, we're still going to give this to them with their shares outstanding being flat. This is another check on metric number three. We're perfect so far on Chenier Energy. Metric number four, we're putting some of our previous metrics together. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Chenier Energy. With their shares outstanding being flat, this free cash flow per share growth depends entirely on their free cash flows. Their free cash flows have grown by quite a lot. This is another check on metric number four. Through four metrics, we're perfect. We have four checks. But there's still one vital piece missing. You might think that nailing high returns on capital and having good growth is the key, but we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets truly wonderful businesses apart, which is having these characteristics without using a lot of debt. Metric number five, we want Chenier Energy's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash in their short term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow the company has produced in their last five years. As a liquid natural gas terminal and pipeline operator, this company in all likelihood will be much more heavily levered than other types of businesses. That comes with the territory of having some of these fixed assets. However, Chenier Energy has slightly decreased their net debt position over this time. Right now, the company has about $15.5 billion worth of net debt. In the last five years, they've only produced $7.4 billion worth of free cash flow, with over half of that coming in their most recent fiscal year alone. Their free cash flows are just over half of their current net debt position. While this is expected, this is still an X on metric number five. Of note, if the company keeps up their current free cash flows and we would project those as staying the same for the next five years, it would look like Chenier Energy supports their net debt position using their current free cash flows. Their debt loads may or may not be a cause for concern here. You'd want to dig into the company's 
filings to understand more about these debt loads, including how they're structured, when they mature, and what rates they're at. We need to get to our valuation portion of our analysis. Before we do that, it's time for our bonus. As our bonus, we're looking at Chenier Energy's dividend profile. Right now, Chenier Energy pays that 9.3% dividend yield, which is about four times the dividend yield you'd receive from an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to see if they're able to support their dividends. Chenier Energy has grown their dividends per share in all five of these years. Meanwhile, they've only supported their dividend payouts using their free cash flows in their two most recent fiscal years. Especially in their most recent fiscal year, the company has quite the gap between what they're paying out in dividends and what they're bringing in in free cash flows. They have a modest dividend payout ratio. It's somewhat concerning that the company was not supporting their dividends with their free cash flows in the years prior to 2020. With the company's extremely strong success in their most recent fiscal years, this could be out of the usual going forward for the company, which is something you'd want to consider as well. Right now, however, it seems like Chenier Energy supports their dividend payouts. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Chenier Energy's average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Chenier Energy. Currently, Chenier Energy has a $36.5 billion total enterprise value, taking into account both their market cap and their net debt position. This gives a perspective of Chenier Energy similar to it being a private business. In the last five years, we learned Chenier Energy produced 7.4 billion dollars worth of free cash flow, meaning they produce about one and a half billion dollars in an average year. When that's divided by their 36 and a half billion dollar total enterprise value, we get about a 4.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, in their last 12 months, the company produced $3.7 billion worth of free cash flow. When that's divided by their $36.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives about a 10% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Those are split on either side of that slight risk premium we'd be seeking. They're both above the yield of the 10-year treasury. Because we're taking a historic basis here, this is an X on metric number six. Don't throw this business out. There's still work to do, and we want to come to a more concrete estimate for a fair stock price for Chenier Energy. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Chenier Energy, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of a fair stock price for Chenier Energy. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with a three-year average of Chenier Energy's free cash flows, then growing these into the future using historical assumptions. It's up to you to do your own homework and figure out if these will be accurate or not for the business. Assuming they're three-year average free cash flows grow at a rate of 5% annually for the next 10 years, then assuming these grow at a rate of 4% annually for the 10 years from there. If we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives an estimate of their net worth, seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett's looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements. At today's valuations, an estimate of Chenier Energy's fair intrinsic value is around $35 per share. That's down about $11 from the company's current stock price down $5 from the business's 52-week lows. There are key points to be mindful of here. Chenier Energy has had a low degree of business predictability in its past. Up until the last five years, the company has issued quite a few shares, meaning the company has taken different approaches to capital allocation at different times. That's something you'd want to dig into and learn more about. Importantly, the company's 9.3% dividend yield is already included in this 15% discount rate. We would not be doubly counting their dividends. This 15% represents total estimated returns to share holders. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a moment, we'll give our final rating to Chenier Energy, but we have to address something first. We focused a lot on the numbers, but what are the important qualitative factors of the business? Starting with the qualitative factors supporting a potential long thesis, number one, Chenier should have billions of dollars to deploy over the next few years towards stock repurchases, dividends, or distributions, or even further LNG projects. Number two, Chenier's contracts are very strong with no price reopeners, no linkage to oil prices, and flexibility on delivery points. Number three, at $600 to $700 per ton for incremental capacity expansion projects, Chenier has some of the lowest cost LNG projects on the global cost curve, well below the US average of $800 per ton, and similar targets by Australian LNG producers. Then the qualitative aspects supporting a potential short thesis. Number one, US gas supply is not the lowest cost global 
gas available compared with countries like Qatar. Though because U.S. gas costs are more variable than standard offshore projects, U.S. gas supply is likely to be the marginal supplier of global gas. Number two, the complexity of the Chenier group of entities can be difficult to understand, contributing to investors discounting the stock. Number three, if China changes its government policy on higher natural gas consumption, this would likely mean a decline in demand for U.S. LNG. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our rating. In analyzing Chenier Energy Partners, stock ticker CQP, we learn the business earns above average returns on capital, slightly above twice as good as a typical business. They've had strong growth in their revenues and their free cash flows while they've kept their shares outstanding flat. The company looks like it's using a lot of leverage relative to their free cash flows. That's not out of the ordinary for these LNG companies, though that's something to be mindful of, which you should research in more depth, especially to see when some of these payments would be coming due. Both the company's average and current free cash flows were above the yield of the 10-year treasury, but on average, that was below the risk premium we'd be seeking. While currently, that does look like it's attractive. Something else you'd want to dig into is whether they can sustain their recent success going forward into the future, which affects their 9. 3% dividend yield, as that's been covered by their free cash flows in their two most recent fiscal years, but not in the prior three years. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, from today's valuations, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, an estimate for a fair stock price for Chenier Energy is around $35 per share. The company was last at those levels in January of 2021. Combining all the factors of our analysis, Chenier Energy looks like a very strong candidate for further research. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to look at next time. Thanks for learning about Chenier Energy Partners with me and have a great day.